And now I can go in and edit templates. And I can edit the template for that. And what I can do is on my delete link, I can code a on client click event. All right. And this is pretty wacky, right? Because our server-side control, we can trigger a, a little piece of JavaScript. All right? So what do we want to do? We simply want to pop up an alert, let's say, and say, do you want to delete? In JavaScript, that's called a confirm box. So I can say return confirm. Are you sure? I think that will do, do the trick for us. Let's go and run it and check. So now I click that delete. It asks me, am I sure? If I click cancel, it doesn't delete it. If I click OK, it does delete it. How, how did you hop from the initial grid to, to inserting? You hop from the initial grid to the, the template edit? Um, well, I went in. It's a couple step process. I'm in my. I'm, I'm looking at my grid view. I go to edit columns. I pick the column I want and convert it to a template. All right. Then I go in and I click that and I click edit templates. And that allows me to see all the templates I have, whether it be for the instructions or the category name, and I can go and edit the templates for that. And in this case, what did I want to change? Well, I wanted this command. I wanted this link to have a slightly different behavior. I want to call the JavaScript, basic JavaScript method, nothing I made up, called confirm. And I'm giving it the value of are you sure. And a confirm box has a yes or a no, or an OK and cancel, or whatever. And I'm returning that value. So by returning that value, if I click cancel, it's going to return a false, which is going to sort of stop the presses. And it won't go ahead and continue and delete. Whereas if I click OK, it will go and it will return to true, and it will continue and delete. All right, here's a hypothetical question. We're not going to actually do this, but... One of the issues that you have when you program in something like this is like where to make the change. So even if you don't know like exactly how to do it, it's a skill to figure out, once you do figure out how to do it, where you're going to put the code. Right? And, I mean, that is. That is a very valuable skill. So let's say my delete. All right. Someone talked about there being an undo. Right? And that's an alternative sort of to the confirm. Right? Instead of asking, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? That gets a little annoying. It's like, the problem really is like, yeah, I'm sure. of course I'm sure. Why do you think I clicked the delete button? The problem is the like, oh no, I clicked the wrong delete button after the fact. So, a confirm is one way, but another way would be to remember the values somewhere and to do an undo. All right. We might do this later on in the term. Oh, this is actually would be a good activity to do. I don't think we're quite quite ready to do it now, but this would be a good good one to do. But let's think about this for a second. Where do you suppose we're going to put some code to remember 
what we've deleted so that we can undo it later. In a variable. In a variable. Okay. And where are we going to set that variable? In the code behind. All right. What method on the code behind? We probably want to do this before it's actually deleted. So the, the on deleting, or on row deleting. In other words, during the process of it being deleted, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to save it so that we remember what it is. And so we can go and we can retrieve it later. All right? So, again, we're not ready to do all that yet, but it is important to sort of understand the flow of events and how these things happen to know, like, where you'd even put the code. What, what, what move what information in the database? Uh, if you store it in a variable, I mean, as soon as you close the session down, you're going to lose it. It would depend on the requirements uh, of, of the system. Um, like, for example, I use a, a simple online task manager. And if I delete a, a, a task and go, oh, shoot, that's the wrong one, I can, like, undo it. If I close it, the window is gone. Right. All right? So something like that that isn't earth-shattering, if it was something truly like where it's a big deal to delete something, you know, uh, you probably would like write it to an archive table or something like that. And so at work we have a website that allows users to delete formulas. Right. They're custom formulas they created. But right. Every once in a while they call up and go, hey, where's my formula? And we just have it in a database flag. Exactly. It's not actually Exactly. And, and that's often what's done. Um, is instead of actually physically deleting it, you set a flag saying it's, it's, no, it's deleted, it's inactive, or whatever. Then maybe you run a, pr a, 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 a procedure, you know, once a year, once every six months, or whatever, that goes and actually cleans out the stuff that has been flagged as deleted. The thought being that, um, gee, if they haven't used it in the, in the past year, you know, that you probably are never going to use it. All right. Let's look now at the poll table. All right. We're going to do something similar with the poll table. So let's go in and let's create a new page. I'll call it polls. ASPX. I'm focusing on grid views now. Notice um, uh, a lot of the things that I am saying about grid views also applies to details views. Uh, now I'm focusing on these just because, you know, why not? Um, as we go forward, though, next week we'll, we'll do some examples because there are some differences. Namely, in an insert, um, you can insert on a details view where you can't insert on a grid view. So there's that difference right off the bat. There's like an extra mode that you can be in. All right. But for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, just stick with um, grid views. So I'll create a page called polls. Excuse me. I'll go in and add my SQL data source. and my grid view. I'll go in and say configure data source now with the polls we have three fields. We have a poll ID, we have a category ID, and we have a question. Alright? Now, the category ID relates to another table. It's a foreign key into the category table. All right? You may be tempted to create a SQL statement that joins the poll table and the category table. That's how we would have done this if we were doing, like, a query, like, last week or something like that, and we wanted to see the, the, the category name.
let me just say this, and this is somewhat my own bias, all right? It gets complicated when you're doing database updates and your SQL contains multiple tables. Because, like, which table are you updating? The framework gets confused easy. And it's not as though you can't work it out, but who needs the aggravation? All right? So my philosophy on this is, if I'm doing a query, that is, I'm doing something where I'm only reading and, and outputting a table, I'll do joins. But if I'm creating a grid view that I want to maintain, I'll never do a join. Nope, never. Now, you might ask yourself, well, how am I going to get those values? We'll see in a second. And we already know, right? Or we already have a pretty good idea. We're going to get those via template fields. All right? So with that in mind, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say I want everything from the poll table, no where clause, order by, yeah, I don't know, I'll make order by question. Advanced, do I want to generate insert updates and deletes? Yes, I do. Next, test query. All right. Now I can go and I can bind those two. And I can enable editing and deleting. Now, it should work, right? But we're going to get the very vanilla functionality. So I go and run this. And I can edit this. something to a category and I click edit and I actually want this to be something else well I gotta know what the ID is let's say for example if this was a sports question just hypothetically all right I'd have to know what the category ID of sports is well who knows what that is I don't I don't remember even though there's only a handful of these, I don't remember them. I and you wouldn't want to force your users to know that. So, we're going to have to go and alter this grid view to do what? To allow a drop down. All right. Now, let's think about what's going to be nice about doing a drop down. What's going to be nice about doing a drop down is this. All right. If I go and do an edit here, and I put in some ridiculous number that I know I don't have and try to update it, it's going to blow up, all right? Even if I don't put quite such an outlandish value in it, it's going to blow up because there's no category with that number. If I have a drop-down, though, I can control the user to only pick a number that's valid, all right? So I don't have to worry about that kind of error. Remember we mentioned before that one of the ways that you can prevent errors is simply by designing your form appropriately. And again, I'm using the word prevent loosely because you could concoct a, a scenario even with a drop-down where I load the page, get the drop-down, someone goes in the database, deletes a category, I pick that category, try to save it, and it blows up. Yeah, yeah, I know. But... We're talking about in the normal course of affairs, all right, without unusual. I can minimize, maybe minimize is a better word than prevent. I can minimize the risk of error simply by designing my form correctly. 
So instead of giving them a free form text box where they can type in any number they want, I'm going to give them a, a drop down where they're limited to pick only the things that I allow them to be. Now, what's that drop down going to look like? What do I want the text of each option to be? I want it to be the name of the category, right? In other words, if I show my categories are 5, 6, 1, 2, and 9, you know, I'm, I'm really not that much better off. Now, what do I want the data value of that drop down option to be? The category ID, the primary key. Why? Because that's what the database needs. I'm not storing with each poll the name of the category. I'm storing with each poll the category ID. So again, we show the user one thing. Behind the scenes, the value is something else, is, is what the database needs or what the script needs. All right. So let's go and do that. All right. So. I can make a SQL data source. Why do I need a SQL? Why do I need a SQL data source? For the dropdown to pull a list of categories. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to configure data source. Same old connection. Now let's see the category ID and name. Order by category name. And there we go. Now, I want to go and make this in edit mode be a drop down. So we probably know how to do that, right? It needs to be what kind of column? be a template column. So we'll go in here, edit columns, to make this drop down a template. Okay. I go in here and I click edit templates and I can pick for my category ID, my item, my alternating item, my edit, and so on. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete that text box. I don't want a text box. Instead, what do I want? I want a drop down. So, boom, put it in there. Choose data source. SQL data source 2. Field I want to display. Category name. Data field. Category ID. I have one more thing I have to do. I have to click edit data bindings. All right. All I've done is I've created a drop-down that shows a list of categories here. I have to associate that drop-down with the proper field in the database, which is what? Well, it's category ID. And I want two-way data binding. I'll give you the short answer and the long answer to this one. I'll give you the short answer first so you don't have to pay attention to the long answer. <laughs> the short answer is check this box. <laughs> All right? That's real short. Yeah, that's a short answer, right? <laughs> the long answer is what two-way data binding is, is it binds the data coming in and it binds the data going out. So it will take the data that's currently in the poll table for category ID and it will bind it to that drop-down so it will show the category that's already been assigned to this poll. So it will show technology or sports or whatever. That's the one way data binding. The other way data binding is once we've changed it and we go to save it, it's going to take the field from that drop down and put it back in the category ID. I don't know why you would not check that. I can't in my head think of a scenario where I wouldn't want to check that. There probably is, right? Somewhere. I just haven't thought of it yet. but. That's what, hence the short answer. Okay. In a way, uh, away we go now. So now I run this. I see, click that, 
oh, that's supposed to be, notice it, it brought up category ID of technology for this guy. So it knew the category going in. I can go and say, well, actually, that's kind of a political issue, really. <laughs> you know, It sounds like a political issue sometimes when you get arguing to people about what's better. And then I can go and click and update it. Now notice it changed it from one to three. So I can, if I click that again, I see it did indeed change it to politics. Now, you might say, and you'd be correct, I don't like the fact that I'm still seeing the category ID in, in read-only mode. Well, we're going to bind it again to the drop-down. We're going to make another drop-down. But we're going to make that drop-down in item template mode. So I get rid of that. Drop down, edit data bindings, bind a category ID, choose data source, SQL data source 2, category name, category ID. And I'm going to do one more thing. Since this is read only mode, I am going to. I think set enabled to false. Because I don't really want to want, I really don't want this to work like a drop down. Right? I want to show the value, but I really don't want the user to be able to change it when I'm in read only mode. So I go and run this. And now I will see the names of the categories. And I can't change them, but it does show me the name of them until I go into edit mode and then I can go and change it and it changes it effectively. Is there a reason why you chose to change the text box to the drop down? That it was just a text box and it seemed like you could just find the text box to the data source and have it show the name. Was there a reason why you couldn't? Trying to think how I do that. I could make a label. Yeah, but it's what it was in the first place. Right. You chose a drop. That's why I'm wondering why you chose to go to a drop down. I, I went to chose to a drop down because I have a number in there, and I want that number to map to the name. And a drop down is a mechanism that easily maps. That has a display and a value. That has a display and a value. I could probably do it with a label. I'm thinking it would take some custom code on my part to do it. Because it already has them, the mechanism of I'm going to store one thing and I'm going to display something else. Yes. All right. Now we could we could continue to do this. We could add validators and and all those sorts of things uh, to this guy. And again, I suppose we could make a radio button group instead if we'd prefer for category. Um, for yes or no fields, we could do bind the checkboxes, all right, and, and, and so on. But again, this works a lot cleaner if I don't do a join. If I just say, hey, if I'm maintaining this table, I'm just going to have just this table. And any related tables, I'm going to use this technique. That's the way that I found works the easiest and most effective. Is it the only other way? Is it the only way? Of course not. But, you know. I, I hesitate to say you're on your own if you try it some other way, but it's, in my experience, it's more difficult to do it some other way. Do you have a question, David? Okay, I thought I heard, I thought I heard something. Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Earlier you deleted text box and you brought the drop down list, right? Yes, I did. Uh, how text box, came, text box came there? The text box came there because that's just a default. Remember, the, de the default behavior of a grid view is that in, in, in just read-only mode, is displayed in a label. In edit mode, is a text box. That's a default for every field uh, in, in a grid view, all right, provided it's editable. 
So that's where the text box came from. So the whole reason I did this is I didn't want a text box, right? So I went and deleted the text box and dragged a, a drop down in there. Yes? Let's say getting to the auto rental, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a table where you want to edit a car. Mm -hmm. You'd have to have more. You'd have to have joined tables. Really? Otherwise, you'd have them bringing up table after table after table. Well, this is a make table. You know, it's a Chrysler. And you go, I need to go to the model table. Or you could have three of them there. Right? Well. Am I, am I missing the point? Um. I don't know if you're missing the point or not. That's a really good question. The idea is, is think of what you need to provide when you're editing a car. All right? When you're editing a car, you might have to pick a, do you pick a make and model from it? No, you assign a model to it. Now, you could, and again, you could create your template column this way, but you could have drop downs where first you pick the make that limits your second drop down to only show models of that make or I could just say I'm going to pick the, mo uh, the, the model of the car right off the bat because remember you don't have a make ID in your table in your auto table you have a model ID in your auto table so what you need to provide to update yeah to update uh, an automobile is is the ID of the model table. And then from that, it figures out the, the make it belongs to. Now, you might want your interface to be done differently. The most straightforward way to do that would be to create a, a grid view for the auto and then create a drop down for model. And that would work. It would show you all the models. You could pick the model. All right. Now, you might say, well, I want to do the user interface a different way. And that's fine, but that would just mean a different sort of template column you'd create. You, you, you'd do something different in the creation of the, of the template column, and you might write, write some custom code or whatever to do that. So still, you're only maintaining the, um, when push comes to shove, your update statement is only going to hit the auto table, and it's only going to provide the fields it needs. Well, that makes sense because then it has all the IDs in it. You would have all the yep. IDs that you want in there. And then just edit those and tie them yep. in the back. Right? Time it, yep, exactly. All right. Other questions? Um, that, uh, that last one you just did for the, uh, the item template mm -hmm. zone, you dragged, let's see, you dragged a drop down into the item template. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, had to, what, to figure the, choose, no, choose the data source related to that? Or? Well, you do, you do two things when you make a template column with a drop down. These are two different activities. All right? There's an edit data bindings and choose data source. Let's be very clear on what each of these do. So this is a good question. I could, I could see where this is a little confusing. These are two different things. Choose, da, 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 choose data source says, how is this dropdown going to be populated? Or with what is this dropdown going to be populated? This dropdown is populated with what? It's going to be uh, populated by a list of categories. Where does it get that list of categories? It gets that list of categories from SQL data source 2. Okay? So, this dropdown, the data source for it is SQL data source 2. All right? That's where it gets its list of values. That's one part of the thing that we need to specify, where the dropdown gets its values. The one above it, <coughs> excuse me, edit data bindings is a different question. That says, once we pick a value from the dropdown, where does this go in the database? So I pick a category from the dropdown list. Where does that category go? Well, the category I select goes to the polls category ID. So two different things I, I'm, I'm setting here. One is the first one, the data source, identifies 
how that drop-down gets populated. The data binding says, how does a select